are a number of very different kinds of eye in the living world. We are generally familiar with the camera type eye, unique to vertebrates. This works on the principle of light refraction. Light from the outside enters by being refracted by the lens in the front part of the eye, by way of which it is focused on the posterior part. The eyes of some other living things, however, function very differently. One of these is the lobster eye. This works on the principle of reflection rather than refraction. The noteworthy feature of the lobster eye is that the surface is made up of a large number of squares. These are highly regular, as we can see. These regular squares on the lobster's eye are all in fact the front surface of square prisms. This structure may be compared to a honeycomb. When you look at a honeycomb, you first see only a hexagonal surface. However, these hexagonal surfaces are the surfaces of prisms extending towards the interior of the comb. What makes the lobster's eye different is that the shape is square instead of hexagonal. Even more interestingly, the interior surfaces of each of these square prisms have a mirror-like structure. These mirror-like surfaces reflect light in a very powerful manner. These prisms are placed with an angle to flawlessly focus light on one single point. It is clear that the structure here represents a serious difficulty for the theory of evolution. First and foremost, the eye possesses the feature known as irreducible complexity. Were it not for the square cells in the front part of the eye, or if these were unable to reflect light, or if there were no retinal layer in the back of the eye, the eye would serve no purpose at all. For that reason, it cannot be suggested that the lobster eye developed in stages. To suggest that such a perfect structure came about by coincidences is totally irrational. The gradual loss of the lens in a crustacean's eye and the emergence of mirrored surfaces where the lens had once been would leave the animal deprived of sight right from the very outset. It would, therefore, be eliminated through natural selection. Obviously, both eye structures have been structured according to two very different blueprints and individually created. There is such an immaculate geometric order in these eyes that it is ridiculous to even consider the possibility of chance. Like all other miracles of creation, the lobster eye shows the infinite and flawless creative ability of the Creator. This is a manifestation of the infinite knowledge, might and intelligence of Allah. Wherever we look in the living world, we encounter such miracles of creation. One species of parrot that lives in South America manages to feed on some seeds even though they are highly poisonous. The behavior of this parrot is quite amazing. While other living things are unable to even approach these seeds, why is it that nothing happens to these birds that constantly eat them? Immediately after eating these seeds, which are actually highly nutritious, these parrots, known as macaws, fly off to a cliff face. When they arrive, they break off a few fragments of rock with clay and swallow them. 
This is no random activity. The characteristic of these rock fragments is that they absorb the toxins inside the seeds. This enables the birds to digest the seeds without the slightest discomfort. But how do these birds come by the medical knowledge with which to determine the poisonous effects of these seeds? How do they know how to neutralize those effects? Could they have been taught enough pharmacology to know that these rocks contain a substance that will neutralize the toxins in the seeds? No such thing is possible, of course. A human being cannot tell if seeds are poisonous just by looking at them. Nor can they know how to neutralize the toxins. They will either have to have received special training or else to have asked someone who knows. That being the case, it is impossible to say that a bird devoid of any reason or consciousness could have discovered such a thing as a result of lengthy chemical analysis and investigations. It is impossible for macaws to have acquired the knowledge that human beings can only attain after years of special training by chance. It is Allah, the flawless creator of all things, who taught this to the macaws. Reflection on such examples is sufficient to show that the behavior of living things cannot be the result of chance. Allah inspires the knowledge to all living things. None of the creatures are left aimlessly to coincidences. In one of the verses of the Quran it is revealed that all living things are under the absolute control and dominion of Allah. I have put my trust in Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is no creature he does not hold by the forelock. My Lord is on a straight path 